to watch from the sidelines as two Rafales are destroyed. The rest retreat, unable to stand and fight in the face of five to one odds. Just then, the Americans are cleared to engage the MiG-35s in a novel way. The lead Raptor data links the coordinates of one of the enemy fighters to a 767 with a circular turret on its nose. The nodule contains a high energy solid state laser capable of vaporizing an enemy aircraft from a range of 90 miles. The aircraft is a platform for whatever weapon you want to put on it. We start off with a gun, we went to some rockets, then we went to guided missiles. And if a beam type weapon, a directed energy weapon, is the next step, then it's logical to expect that we'll put that on as well. It sounds like science fiction, but defense contractors are already at work on weaponized lasers. The concept dates back to the 1980s and the Reagan administration's strategic defense initiative, nicknamed Star Wars. These lasers were meant to target and destroy Soviet ICBMs. In recent years, this knowledge has been applied to the development of the airborne laser, or ABL. It's just a very large laser that's mounted in a Boeing 747 type aircraft and it has the system such that it can acquire a target, primarily a missile, but it could be a fighter, and then fire a very powerful uh, laser beam at that target and take it down. The ABL of today are bulky chemical oxygen iodine lasers designed as anti-ballistic missile weapons. Boeing and Northrop Grumman hope the first operational test of this ABL will occur in 2009. If successful, engineers will continue work on the ABL as well as other applications of high energy weapons. It is hoped these lasers can be mounted on multiple platforms, aircraft, ships, even tanks. Pretty soon we are gonna have those weapons. And eventually the first time they find out we're using them tactically is when they start disappearing off the screen and we haven't fired a shot as far as being a fighter jet. When such weapons reach the field, air combat will again be revolutionized. All a pilot will need is a coordinate. And with the press of a button, destruction at the speed of light. The Boeing, safely out of missile range 150 miles away, charges the laser and fires. The beam is in the infrared spectrum and is not visible to the naked eye. One of the lead Su-30s is vaporized. The effect of the weapon is slow to sink in for the enemy formation. No one is quite sure what happened. A second coordinate is relayed to the 767. Again, the laser fires. Now, the Su-30s take evasive action, diving toward the Pacific to flee the lethal ray. With open war at hand, the Raptors secure permission to engage any hostile target. Then, the Raptors missile alarm rings out. Despite their stealth, the F-22s are being actively tracked by several Mach 5 surface-to-air missiles. In an instant, the era of stealth has ended. April 8th, 2027. In a hypothetical combat scenario based on what military experts believe the future of air combat will be, A flight of four American F-22 Raptors have come under attack. A salvo of surface-to-air missiles are tracking. 
they've locked onto the stealthy F-22s using low-frequency radar, a vulnerability of stealth technology exploited by the Serbs in Kosovo in 1999. During this conflict, an F-117 Nighthawk was lost to a surface-to-air missile that was modified to use low-frequency radar to lock onto targets. The drawback of this type of radar is the huge amount of clutter it detects. This is why no one else has been able to duplicate the feat. Now they say that low frequency radar could possibly see stealth aircraft if it was computer aided and they were able to clean up all the clutter and then actually focus in on a stealth aircraft. To say that's a viable option, sure, possibly, with the amount of computer power we have these days, that could possibly happen. But you still have to know exactly where in the sky to look for a stealth airplane. The Raptor pilots take immediate evasive action. These SAMs are traveling at an astonishing speed, over 2,000 miles per hour. The pilots cannot rely on their eyes. The missile is simply moving too fast. The HMD aids them, projecting the SAM's position on the visor so they can maneuver. One missile finds its mark. hurling deadly shrapnel into the air like firing a shotgun the size of a telephone pole directly into the Raptor. The American is forced to punch out. With quick thinking and aggressive maneuvering, the three remaining F-22s defeat their missiles and retreat. As they withdraw, another warning blares. They've been fired on again. This time,